So today we are starting lecture 76 in our helicopter dynamics course. Today I'm going to talk about helicopter vibration. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now vibration is one of the most important problems facing helicopters and this is because vibration not only has a negative impact for the passengers, the pilot and so on, but also for the expensive instruments which are often there in the helicopter. And in fact, what has happened over the last couple of decades or more is that the cost of the instruments and the avionic systems has become more and more expensive. And therefore, we need to make sure that these systems as well as the passengers do not get exposed to high vibration. Now, before we go get into some of the vibration minimization methods, let's look at the sources of vibration and understand the genesis of vibration in the helicopter system. So essentially the causes of vibration in a typical helicopter are due to several physical reasons. The first one is the asymmetry of airflow on the rotor disc in forward flight. The second is essentially the atmospheric turbulence which may be present. And the third important one is due to the blade vortex interaction. This is sometimes known as BVI. Now let's look at it diagrammatically. So if we look at the rotor disc, we have the velocities in forward flight. So this is the forward speed mu. And so on the advancing side of the rotor, the velocity is going to be much higher. It is going to be mu plus the rotation speed component. On the retreating side, it is mu minus the rotation speed component. You'll remember that there is a reverse flow region here. So what happens is that there is much higher velocity on this side, so the loads are going to be more, the loads are going to be less on this side and so on. So throughout the disc, there is going to be lack of symmetry and so this is going to be one of the sources for vibration. Now, the second possibility is that vortexes are shed from the rotor blade and these vortexes go and they crash into the blade which is just behind it. So this is the source of the BVI vibration. Third possibility is that on the side which is encountering a higher velocity, which is in this side here, the Mach number goes up quite substantially. So the Mach number at the tip is going to be mu plus the rotation speed component divided by the speed of sound. And even though the helicopter is flying at a reasonably low speed compared to the Mach number, or compared to the speed of sound, the Mach number at the tip of the blades is going to become quite high in many situations. So essentially you are going to get impacted by some of the deleterious effects of compressible flow, such as shocks and wave drag and so on. A further component is going to be the interaction which is present in the rotor and the fuselage. So essentially the flow from the rotor impacts the fuselage and that is going to cause problems because this is going to lead to some levels of vibration coming from this system. So let's summarize some of these things. So we talked about the interaction between the blade and the fuselage. We talked about the high Mach number on the advancing side of the blade. We talked about the fact that M-tip can reach high transonic speeds resulting in shocks and that can lead to further increase in the lack of symmetry of the helicopter rotor. There are also aspects about blade instability which you may get due to flap lag coupling. Finally, there is a possibility that the blades do not all have the same properties and therefore this is going to lead to vibration. Very similar to if a car has different pressures on different tires, you get a vibration there. So that's very often a source of a one per rev vibration. So for example, let us think of a four bladed rotor and one of the blades is slightly different compared to the remaining three blade. Maybe its mass and stiffness properties have become slightly different with time or because of some damage. So what's going to happen is that you are going to get a one per rev vibration coming from this rotor to the fuselage. And this is going to be 
quite a nuisance for the passengers as well as for the system in general. So one of the things which is often done is you try to keep the blades in track. So you make sure that you put some tuning masses or do some changes on some of the blades using trim tabs and so on, so that all the blades are as similar as possible. And so therefore the one per F is mitigated to as much extent as possible. Now, beside the main rotor, which is the primary source of vibration, there are some more sources of vibration. For example, you can get vibration from the engine and the transmission system. So maybe you are using a gas turbine engine here and the transmission involves all kinds of complex gear mechanisms. So these are also going to cause vibration. Tail rotor is also likely to result in vibration because remember, that's one more rotating mechanical system out there. Now, vibration not only impacts the ride quality, but also influences the fatigue life of the components. The primary source of vibration is the main rotor. And therefore, most of the literature out there or the work out there as far as helicopters is concerned, concentrates on bringing down the vibration coming from the main rotor. And of course, as we all know, vibration is an oscillatory motion in the fixed system. It is transmitted by the rotor to the fuselage. So typically some qualitative aspects about helicopter vibration are known. Vibration levels are generally lower in hover condition and increase in forward speed. There is a region of high vibration at low forward speed. This is the transition flight state. And uh, there are two regions, the low speed flight and the very high speed flight where the vibration levels are most critical and relatively high. So most people look at these levels for where the vibration level should be mitigated. Now, the helicopter can be thought of as a very complex system of springs, dampers, and masses which are connected to each other. This is like a giant complex multi-degree of freedom system, and this is being forced by some external forces which are also acting at various frequencies. So this system is going to have many natural frequencies. So you would expect a complex response of this system at various frequencies also. Now, we will assume that the blades are the same. Therefore, the vibration in the fixed system gets very much simplified. Remember, if the blades are different, you will encounter all sort of one per F vibration and so on. But let's assume for now that the blades are completely same. So in that case, what would happen is that because of the presence of the different type of forcing terms which are there on the right hand side of the equation and the aerodynamic loads which are acting on the helicopter rotor, the rotor would experience all the harmonic loads. So essentially frequencies such as one, two, three, four, five, six per rev and so on will be there. Basically, this is a Fourier series type of situation. You have all the harmonics being present there and generally the lower ones will be larger and it will become smaller as the harmonics go up. So that's going to be the response of the, that's going to be the harmonic content of the rotor load. Now, what happens is that what is transmitted by the rotor to the fuselage are only the multiples of the rotor speed. So for example, n times rotation speed, two n times rotation speed, three n times rotation speed. These harmonics or frequencies are transmitted by the rotor to the fuselage where n is the number of blades. So to look at it more concretely or in pictorial terms, let's look at a rotor here. Various loads are acting here. And like I mentioned before, these loads have a variety of harmonic content all the way from 1 per f, 2 per f, 3 per f, all the way going on. So now let's imagine that this rotor is a four-bladed system. So n is equal to 4. In that case, what would happen is that the body or the fuselage would get mostly a 4 per rev vibration, but also there may be some small amount of 8 per rev, 12 per rev, 16 per rev, and so on. Now, the vibration is going to be largely at 4 per rev, and these numbers are going to become very substantially smaller. So what's happening here is that while at the rotor disc, you have all these harmonics present. At the fuselage, you are only getting 4 per rev, 8 per rev, and so on. So the rotor is acting as a filter. So essentially it is filtering one, two, three, it's letting the four get through, five, six, and so on. So the key source of vibration for a rotor of n blades 
are the n times rotation speed loads which are transmitted by the rotor to the body. Now, we also should keep in mind that the 2n time, 3n time rotation speed are also important, but these are typically much smaller than the n per f vibratory loads. So for a four bearer rotor, what it means is the four per f loads are the main loads which are transmitted by the rotor to the body. The eight per rev, 12 per rev are very small numbers relative to the four per rev. So the rotor therefore acts as a filter and transmits certain harmonics, essentially P and per rev to the fuselage. So here P is one, two, three, and so on. So all the remaining harmonics are obliterated at the rotor. So therefore the rotor acts as a filter. And again, remember this is only if all the blades are same. So now we come to the question, which is an important question in design is how to reduce vibration. Now let's look at some of the methods you can use during the design process. One is that you can tailor the structural aerodynamic properties of the blade for vibration reduction. And this is at the design process itself. You try to design the blade such that the frequencies are kept substantially separated from multiples of the rotor speed. You design the airfoil sections also such that compressibility gets delayed, for example, at the blade tip and so on. Now, sometimes the blades are swept also, that helps the situation. Now, optimization methods could be used to do this tailoring and a lot of research has gone into that direction and some companies have also used these methods. Now, selection of parameters such as blade twist, tip shapes are also possible to reduce vibration. And composite materials can be used for tailoring. So one of the aspects about composite material is that they can create certain beneficial couplings between the pitch flap, pitch lag, and so on. And these couplings can, in certain cases, help to reduce vibration by changing the rotor deflections depending on the flight situation. Now, broadly speaking, there are two types of vibration suppression devices, the passive control devices and the active control devices. Now, in passive devices, you have two types. So you have the isolators and you have the absorbers. So in the first situation, you have certain spring mass type of systems being placed, which essentially separate the source of vibration out from where you want to reduce vibration. And the second approach is essentially to diffuse this vibration or to absorb it in some system. So these systems are very frequently used to suppress vibration. Now in these passive devices, the problem is that they function well at a certain tuned flight condition and then they will degenerate if you go away from the tuned flight condition. Now, in contrast, you also have what are known as the active control devices. And here the vibration source is suppressed, which means that actually, for example, if your four per rev in the fixed system is coming from two, three, four, and five per rev in the rotating system at the blade, you want to excite the rotating system at certain frequency or the blade at certain frequency such that you cancel the higher harmonic loads acting on the main rotor. So essentially, this is done by several methods. So there is the higher harmonic control, there is the individual blade control, there is the active twist rotor concept. And all these concepts essentially use certain type of actuators to deflect the blade in a suitable manner so that the harmonics which are acting on the rotor blades are canceled to prevent them from being transmitted by the rotor to the fuselage. Now, essentially, most of these works use some kind of hydraulic mechanisms to start with, but lately smart structure concepts have been looked at. So you may have heard of the topic of the smart rotor. And in the smart rotor, what is, what is done is that various piezoelectric materials or even magnetostrictive materials are used to deflect the rotor in certain direction, or in some cases they are used to move a trailing edge flap type of device, which is placed on the rotor blades. And these devices are essentially moved at certain higher harmonic frequencies such that the loads which are acting on the rotor blades get canceled because of the loads which are generated by this 
movement using the piezoelectric flaps or the piezoelectric twist system. So this kind of de device just does require power and it does require the capability to deflect the blade by using some electric field or magnetic field, for example, in the case of piezo or magnetostrictive respectively. And by using these kind of deflections, you can mitigate the vibration level. So this is again an important area of research and some companies are actually now building helicopters, at least demonstrating with various flight prototypes and so on as far as the smart rotor system is concerned. So this video hopefully gave you an introduction to the vibration problem. The vibration problem was one of the main problems in helicopter even when I was a PhD student and it remains a main problem as of now. The problem involves both the prediction capability as far as vibratory hub loads are concerned. For example, for a four-bladed rotor, the four per rev hub loads are going to be very critical and also in figuring out how we can bring down this vibration level because not only vibration is important for the passengers and the pilot but also for the structural system in general and for the instrumentation systems in particular. So I will stop this video here and I will see you in a lecture sometime soon. See you then.